For today's example, I'm gonna be editing this photo that I took here in Montana. I'll walk you through a bit of my creative process as far as capturing the image and then how it goes in post-production. Editing your photos is one of the most important parts of your creative process. I also believe that editing can be a huge barrier for beginning photographers because they see something, they wanna capture it, but it just doesn't do it justice through the camera. This can usually be achieved by getting better at photo editing. It's one thing to shoot a great photo with great lighting because a great photo really does come from the lighting when the photo is captured, but editing the photo is one major part in bringing your vision to life. The fun and overwhelming part about photo editing is there are literally thousands of ways to edit one image. Each photographer has their own style and therefore are going to edit their images differently than another person. Number one on the list is that I shoot my images in raw format. If you don't know what RAW is, it's essentially a flatter image with more detail preserved in it. This allows you to edit the image with more detail and range in post-production. The file size of RAW images are typically a bit larger, but with newer technology and cameras, the images still remain a pretty manageable size, so they're not gonna bloat your hard drives or SD cards. To put it simply, RAW images are better for editing. Number two on the list is that I edit all of my images in Adobe Lightroom. Growing up, I thought Photoshop was the photo editor, and when I first picked up a camera around 2011, I was editing all my JPEG images in Photoshop, and it was fun, I learned a lot, but the images really didn't live up to a professional standard. When I began shooting in RAW and editing in Lightroom, that really took my photography to the next level. Essentially, editing in Lightroom allows you for more control and consistency amongst a batch of photos, and be able to quickly copy and paste edits to various images. We will dive more into Lightroom in just a moment. Number three on the list is that I visualize what I want an image to look like before I even capture it. This may sound like I'm some sort of creative guru, but it's really just the way that my brain works. I assume that this is a normal thing for other photographers and creatives, but when I see something going on, like a tree with light hitting the top of it, for example, golden light hitting the top, I kind of imagine what an image of that scene would look like, and I can kind of picture the crop the edit, the colors going on before I even take the image. In most cases, this is how an image comes to life in my mind. Um, I can kind of see it happen and then it's just a matter of capturing it. It's really such a fun process and that's why I fell in love with photography in the first place is I had those visions but didn't really know how to capture them. So that's what I'm gonna help you guys to do. Over the years, it's been a long process discovering my editing style and being able to maintain consistency over a gallery of 10 to say a thousand images. For me personally, there's nothing I dislike more than when two of my images look drastically different in the same set. I try to maintain the same colors, consistency, and tone uh, throughout a group of images so that they look like they belong together. For today's example, I'm gonna be editing this photo that I took here in Montana. This was an epic view right outside of our front door a few weeks ago. And when I saw it in the morning, I knew I had to grab my camera and capture it. So that's what I did. I'll walk you through a bit of my creative process as far as capturing the image and then how it goes in post-production. There are three main things that I look to adjust when first beginning my photo editing process. Number one is the color profile. Number two is the exposure. And number three is the white balance. Between these three main things, you can pretty much make any image look how you want it to. And then the rest of it is just kind of stylistic and creative afterwards. In my opinion, nailing your white balance and exposure is 90% of the work on most images. Of course, getting these settings right in camera is technically ideal, but we all know that when you're out in the field shooting run and gun or in nature or on a client shoot or at a wedding, you can't always get your exposure and everything correct right off the bat in camera. So this is where editing comes and saves the day. And fortunately, shooting in raw format allows you to have the flexibility you need to make this a reality. Now let's actually dive into Adobe Lightroom and see how I edited this photo. The first thing that I'm gonna take a look at is the color profile. I begin with the color profile as this makes a big difference in your colors and contrast moving forward. I personally prefer the Adobe standard profile as this is a flatter image profile and it just works a little bit better with the colors that I'm looking to achieve. There's really no right or wrong answer here. Play around with whatever works for you and fits your personal style. I think the biggest takeaway here is just maintaining the same color profile across all of your images so that they look consistent. Next, I will focus on getting my exposure right. And this is something that 
is completely different per image. Uh, sometimes it's just right, and other times you have to brighten the image or darken it, depending if you overexposed or underexposed the image in camera. There's technically not a right or wrong answer to this, as rules are made to be broken when it comes to art, but I also like to take a look at the histogram in the upper right corner. To put it simply, the histogram is kind of your light meter showing the graph of your light in the image. If it's centered, that is ideal, and that means that you have a good balance of whites and darks happening in your image. Try to just get it in the middle as much as possible when you're adjusting your exposure, and this will typically mean that you have a well-balanced image. Next up is your white balance, and this is really where your photo editing becomes fun. Setting your white balance can be a fun part of the process as it allows you to bring in the warmth that you are maybe looking for in the image or just giving it an overall certain vibe. Essentially, your white balance is either the warmth or the blueness slash coolness of your image. Although this is a fun step, this is typically the hardest part of the process for me because nailing your white balance can be difficult, but it's super important to get the look that you're looking for. Especially if you're editing a big batch of photos, nailing the white balance across all of them can be very difficult. Once these three things are set on your image, it's basically a blank canvas ready to do whatever creative work you want to do to it. The exposure is just right. The white balance is set to the mood that I'm looking for and my color profile is set to my style. Now it's just a matter of making the image your own. This is where your vision and your craft can turn the photo into whatever you wish. At this part of the process is when I would typically apply a preset to my image I personally use presets that I've developed myself over years of trial and error, messing around with different styles, colors, and cameras to achieve the look that I'm looking for. A preset is a consistent group of certain settings that can be applied to your image. Most of the time, this affects your highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, and usually your tone curve and colors. But each preset's different and can adjust different parts of your image. After I apply the preset, I'll be diving into a bunch of little details tweaking different things to get the image just how I imagined. I will dive into those right now and I can show you exactly what I'm doing in the editor. So from here, I'm just gonna be diving into Lightroom and adjusting a bunch of nitty gritty details to bring out the color, um, get the contrast right, and just work through some of the small details that usually go unseen. So I'm gonna kind of use my up and down arrows on my keyboard to mess with the, um, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks in um, increments of five. That's kind of an easy way to do that. And so usually I like to just kind of bump these up and down, see what I like and what I don't like about it. I'm probably going to leave that at around 10. I just like how that leaves the bright kind of showing through. It really kind of highlights the fog coming through the trees there. And then shadows, probably going to kind of keep them the same. I kind of want to maintain some of the details in the darks there. And then for my whites, um, this is kind of a tricky one. You don't want to blow it out too much. So I'm probably going to go with like negative 25 here. Um, I like the way that that keeps some of the details in the highlights there. And another thing that you can do to check for uh, your before and after is to hit um, this key here and this shows your image before and after. So you can see kind of the, the progress that you've made on it. And then for blacks, I'm gonna mess with this a little bit as well. I do want to make this a little bit darker. Um, so I'll probably leave that around plus 15. So from here, I'm gonna go down into the texture, clarity, and the haze. Um, these are pretty minuscule details. Um, probably go, wanna add a little bit of texture, Clarity, I'll probably bump up a little bit, maybe to seven or so. And then for dehaze, uh, this is kind of a unique image because I want the the fogginess of it to come through and show in the image. So dehaze usually kind of knocks that down, but I'm actually going to put it at like negative 10 just to add a little bit more um, haziness and fog to the image. I'm going to leave the vibrance and saturation where it's at. And then I'm going to get into the color mixer here. I'm probably gonna to go to my saturation just to kind of mess with certain colors in the image. Usually I just grab these, bump them way up and way down and see how much of a difference it really makes. Um, obviously if there's not many reds in an image, for example, it's not really gonna make a difference, but this image does have a lot of oranges in it. So 
this clearly makes a big difference adjusting the oranges. And I want to be able to make this orange really pop. Um, I want to see kind of the warmth of the sunlight coming through the trees and through the fog. So I'm going to probably go up to like 25 or so there. That looks pretty good. And then yellows as well. There's even more yellows than there is oranges. Um, I'm probably going to do that at about 35. I really just like how that makes these colors pop. Greens, there's not too much, but I kind of like... Uh, I kind of like these a little bit lower. Probably going to leave those at negative 15 or so. Blue, not really much in there. Purple, not much in there. And that's looking pretty good as far as saturation goes. And the next thing that will make a big difference in this image is luminance, which is basically the brightness of each of your colors. Um, so again, not too many reds in here. Oranges, you can see when I bump that up, it kind of makes the orange spots brighter. So I typically... We'll make this a little bit brighter just to kind of just kind of make that pop a little bit more. And same thing with the yellows. I'll probably I'll probably keep it pretty subtle. Keep it at maybe plus five. And then the rest of these shouldn't make too much of a difference. That's looking pretty good. There's the before and there's the after. And then let's see, we're gonna go down into the color grading. Uh, this will make a pretty big difference on this image here. I'm gonna go ahead and reset these by just double clicking in the middle. And uh, those were just a part of my preset, but I want it to be a little different for this image. We're gonna start with this. Um, the color grading kind of just adds certain colors to certain parts of the image. So as you can see, if I go around here, you can see it adds green or blue or orange or red or purple. Um, and then this is for the midtones. This one's for shadows and this one's for highlights. So I'm gonna go to about 37 is kind of a typical color that I like to add to my images. Um, so you can see it right there, 37 plus five saturation. Um, that just, again, adds a little bit more orange uh, to make that sunlight really pop. And then I'm gonna do the same for shadows, um, but I'm gonna do this one a little bit more blue. I kind of like adding a little bit of contrast. So I'm gonna do this at like, 64 that looks good and then I'm gonna bump this down to about seven I just like bringing back a little bit of coolness in the trees because this was a cold morning so it kind of just makes that um, kind of contrast between the cool colored trees and the warm sun and then I'm gonna add a little bit more warmth here to the highlights I'm gonna add that at 37 as well and I'm gonna bump this up quite a bit you can see here the more I add to that, the more that that warm sunlight really comes through. So I'm going to add this at about 20 saturation. All right, there we go. Sweet. So that really makes that orange sunlight pop through here. So there's the before, there's the after. Really love that orangish yellow light coming through. And then kind of the last thing I'm going to do to this image is make sure my lens corrections are applied here. So that just kind of adjust it a little bit um, based on the natural uh, correction of the, the lenses. And then I like to add a little bit of vignetting here. So this just takes away any vignetting that happens with the lens, but I like to keep some of it there, just makes it look a little more natural. And then I'm going to add some, I'm going to add some additional vignetting as well, uh, just like negative 10 or so, just because I think it really just, again, makes that sunlight pop. Uh, kind of adds a little bit more of of darks to around the edges of the image and uh, just makes it a little bit more moody. So that's pretty much it. This is kind of the final edited image. Again, here's the before and there's the after. Um, I think that turned out pretty good. I like the the sunlight popping through. I like that you can still kind of see some of the highlights preserved in the, the sunlight here and in the, the brightness of the fog. Yeah, I like that it, it warmed up nice. That was kind of the vision that I had when I was first taking the photo. And that's kind of more so what it looked like to the natural eye. So that's kind of what I'm always uh, searching for is to make it look as real as possible as it did when I actually captured the photo. Sick. I think that's pretty much it. Thanks for tagging along for this longer video. I appreciate you guys sticking around. And if you like these videos, go ahead and give them a thumbs up and let me know what else you might be looking for down below. I'll see you in the next video. My name is Eric. Peace.